Hello, this is Pastor Rick, and I want to welcome you to the Lectionary Bible Study for this Sunday, May the 14th. We've got three wonderful texts from Acts 17, 1 Peter 3, and John 14. First of all, please notice, no Old Testament readings again. We're kind of following the book of Acts. That's the first reading, sort of filling in for the Old Testament reading. And then we're working through the book of 1 Peter very slowly, week after week. A wonderful book uh, that has so much to offer us. And then John's Gospel has been thrown in there, and we will remain in chapter 14 this week. But before we begin, a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, for all your blessings, we give you thanks. Now, send us your spirit that we might hear and be touched by your word. Be with us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we want to begin with our first reading. Again, not Old Testament, but we're following the book of Acts. What happens to these resurrected new Christians who now have given their lives to the risen Messiah? What happens? And we are going to hear those stories today in particular. Uh, we're going to focus in on the second missionary trip of Paul, where Paul is with Silas and then in a few other towns he's with Timothy. So let's just review that second trip because it begins in 17 where he's, he's in Thessalonica and Paul's strategy that we read in this chapter was he'd go to the synagogues and there in the synagogues he would read scripture he would engage with conversation and it says in Thessalonica and some of the other towns many people liked his message and became followers of Jesus as the Messiah and others either said no or were offended. And here in Thessalonica, they want to run him out of town. So they go and try to throw him out of the house where he's experiencing hospitality. It's a struggle. And so he escapes and he goes to Berea. And there he does the same thing as he did in Thessalonica. He goes to the synagogues. And there the same thing happens. He's rejected by some, he's accepted by others. But the people in Thessalonica, they're just still so upset that they go to the next town, Berea, to cause problems uh, for Paul. He finally then has to flee by himself. It seems like Paul's the problem here uh, more than Silas. Silas and Timothy stayed back in Berea. They're trying to calm things down. Paul then goes to Athens, and there he ends up on Mars Hill. And that's where our text is, this famous Mars Hill missionary uh, sermon, where he stands up. This is a place, Mars Hill, that you can still visit today in Athens. And you could give public speeches. You know, sometimes you have parks in the United States, certainly in Britain, where, you know, you got their soapbox, and so you just set it up. And that's what Paul's doing here. He set up his soapbox, and he's talking about this new religion. And it's so interesting in this text because he builds on the Greek and Roman cultural and religious background. And he says in this sermon, you know, I've visited your temples and I found this one temple to the unknown God. Well, how about if I now tell you who that God is? And then he talks about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now he doesn't use those references, of course, because they're not Jewish. So he's using their own religious tradition. He's building on that. And he's saying this is uh, the God who sent Jesus, uh, who then raised from the dead and offers us this life eternal physically, physical resurrection. And of course, the Greeks, it says they're fascinated. Some didn't like the message. Others say, boy, we've not heard something like this before. We'll want to hear you again. So there's a lot about missionary preaching how to engage people where they are religiously and culturally that we pull from this text from Acts 17, the Aragopagus speech, the speech from Mars Hill. Now let's watch the speech from Mars Hill. Now let's move to our second reading from 1 Peter 3. Again, just a reminder, uh, 1 Peter, written by Peter, probably in Rome, probably in prison. And he's talking and writing uh, through a professional writer who he names at the beginning of the book. He's writing to these house churches in Asia Minor. When you hear Asia Minor, think Turkey. And they've been assembled from all over the Roman Empire, and they're meeting in house churches, but they're struggling because many, not all, but many are slaves. And they're working in households where the boss 
always the father, the patriarch of the family, is asking and requiring service that is either idolatrous or breaks their ethical codes. One would be that the patriarch would want everyone in the house to sacrifice to idols and they'd have a little room in the house that was dedicated to those idols and then he'd invite the whole family, right, to be united in their religious convictions. And for the slaves who had already given their lives to Jesus, they're saying, well, can we do this? I mean, is this acceptable? And we don't want to do it. And so Paul is encouraging them to be faithful, to be authentic in their faith, to not worship idols, but to know they may have to suffer on behalf of their faith. And he's saying that's a good thing and tells the story of Jesus, how Jesus also suffered that way. Also, we have here in 1 Peter 3, a table of duties. And we don't hear this very often, but this is in many of the New Testament books that they preach the gospel and then they say, okay, well now how should we live? Well, and here then Peter says, I'll explain how do you live as a wife? How do you live as a husband? How do you live then as children, as slaves, as business owners, right? Even pastors get a shout out and say, okay, pastors, bishops need to live this particular way. In 1 Peter, though, it focuses on slaves. And there's a certain disappointment when we read it today because we really want Peter to condemn slavery, period. But that's not his point. The point is we have slaves. They're working in these homes. What encouragement can we give? What kind of practical advice about how they are to live their lives? And that's their table of duties. Very helpful text. And finally, we're going to end in John 14. We're staying in John 14. And here... Jesus says, I'm going to offer you a gift. And that gift is the Holy Spirit. And he uses some great phrases that we keep coming back to in John 14. Like, I will not leave you stranded. I will not leave you orphaned. But I will send the Holy Spirit to be your advocate, to be your comforter. And he uses even phrases like, um, and you will come back and we will make, the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit will make home with you. We'll, we'll kind of share your heart together. Now these are very intimate and beautiful words uh, that we read here in John 14. I just want to note, uh, we're leaning into the celebration of Ascension. Never a big holiday in the Lutheran Church. It happens on a Thursday, you're going to miss it. Unless we mention it on uh, Sunday the 21st. But it's it's May, excuse me, May 18th is Ascension Sunday. And that applies to this text, because first Jesus has to ascend. He says, I have to ascend to the Father, and then from that position, I promise I'll send the Holy Spirit, who will be your advocate. And of course, then Pentecost will come on May 28th. So just know that this is kind of, we're telling the story through the liturgy. First Ascension, Jesus goes uh, to sit at the right hand of the Father, and from that position, he will send the Holy Spirit to be our advocate. So I hope these are, are, are texts that will guide you and lead you as you're preparing for worship on this uh, Sunday, May the 14th. Again, Acts chapter 17, Mars Hill speech by Paul, uh, 1 Peter, these, this table of duties for all of us, but especially for the slaves at the time. And John 14, Jesus promises to send us the Holy Spirit. Thanks for joining us. Look forward to you seeing you in worship. Bye-bye now.